Gentlemen, we move on to our next technology presentation. The topic for this session is financial services tech at its cloud moment. Our speaker for the session is Mr. Madhusudanan, our co-founder, M2P Fintech. M2P Fintech, Asia's largest API infrastructure company, is an omni-channel platform that operates in over 20 markets, has worked with over 30 banks, and has had over 600 plus Fintech engagements across industries. Mr. Madhusunathan R, aka Madhu, co-founded M2P Fintech with his friends Muthu and Prabhu in 2014. As CEO, he drives a broader strategy and execution on the back of his deep-rooted experience building payments businesses across Asia as part of Citibank and Visa earlier. Prior to starting M2P, Madhu was director of products at Visa for South Asia, where he incubated and developed several new payment products, including Visa's Aadhaar-based payment system, working closely with the government of India. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome Mr. Madhusudan R on stage, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I'm just going to take 10 minutes talking about uh, what we have been doing. I think the slide is not coming. Back in. Uh, so so uh, you know, uh, without further ado, I'll probably jump into the presentation itself. Uh, but I just thought I'll take a minute uh, talking about uh, the topic of uh, you know what I'm going to speak about, right? Uh, I just want to jog a memory and go back 15 years uh, where you know most of the internet businesses, the way they used to run was uh, they will buy hardware, they'll assemble a team, they'll take a data center, and uh, you know somebody in that organization, you know whether it's a internet company, whether it's a, a startup, uh, everything was run you know in-house, right? Uh, you know, and zoom out and look at it today, uh, anybody with a you know, 10,000 rupee credit card can start an internet company, right? Uh, it's because of the fact that cloud computing has kind of taken off in a big way in the last 15 years. Uh, nobody saw it coming, you know, 15 years ago that uh, the whole hardware business will go through a transformation and it'll kind of non not exist on the retail side, uh, which is what, uh, you know, we are at, uh, we are staring at from a financial services standpoint, right? Um, the way banks and you know NBFCs and most of the regulated businesses are buying technology today uh, is almost you know the same how internet companies used to buy in early 2000, right? Which is having a team, uh, buying hardware, doing RFPs, uh, actually selecting vendors based on uh, who's providing the lowest cost of you know operation. Uh, but is it business enabling, right? And that's the point that we have been trying to address as a business. Uh, when we started out, the world was a lot more simpler. Uh, we didn't have fintechs. We didn't have so much of regulations uh, to begin with. Uh, and uh, but but the world has sort of moved on. And and over the last seven eight years, we have tried to kind of adapt ourselves to you know to this changing environment, right? And where we are today, we are nicely juxtaposed between banks and businesses wanting to adopt uh, payment products, wanting to adopt embedded uh, you know finance playbooks. And uh, a lot of what we have built out uh, in India, we are also sort of be able to take it to other markets uh, and and build it out in a way that you know we can use these products you know in several several of the other markets as well. Uh, you know we didn't we couldn't draw a lot from uh, from you know the Western world, uh, so we thought may as well take their money. So we have got some marquee investors from the U.S. who who have sort of invested in our business, and today we kind of serve four different cohorts of co companies. Uh, you know, there is a regulated business, which is not necessarily technology-led. Uh, you know, companies like NBFCs, you know, uh, tr uh, travel companies, exchange houses. Uh, 
We also have banks, a uh, number of banks in India, you know, today work with us on, on a number of products, and I'll talk about those products as well in a minute. Uh, we also have the big tech ecosystem, you know, uh, players like Ola, Swiggy, who kind of need to have very strong payment capabilities to run their own business. And then there's a fourth and an emerging ecosystem around fintechs, which you know, uh, which is you know changing the way some of the thinking and product development is happening uh, in the market. Uh, what this means from a you know business and what it means for us is that uh, we are able to leverage whatever the fintech ideas are out there in the market, which is running on our platform, uh, to and kind of use that to you know sort of accelerate or fast track the innovation cycles at banks, right? So. Uh, as an example, you know, when wallets came into existence in early uh, 2010, 2012, uh, and Paytms and the likes were, you know, really small, uh, it took banks almost four or five years to actually adopt that product, understand that wallet is not a PL story, it is more of a low cost customer acquisition story. But today, you know, that innovation cycle, and largely because they didn't have the tech to run it and, you know, build and operate and all that. But today, when you look at banks wanting to do, you know, BNPL as an example, which is another product that fintechs have, you know, far outstripped what banks have done, uh, those innovation cycles have crunched. You know, banks are today launching that in 12 months, 18 months, uh, from the time they saw that uh, those products are actually making an impact, right? Uh, so therefore, we are able to, we are, we are an agent in that sort of change process where we are able to look at what products are working well, and how do we bring that into the bank's ecosystem? And really build this out into a you know a network of uh, very strong uh, products that can cut across the four segments that I mentioned in my previous slide. Uh, and as it is emerging, uh, we have two different vectors of products that uh, we believe uh, is going out. Uh, India would become a very very large consumption credit story. Uh, so there's a number of action that is being taken both on the market side, uh, from an investor side, as well as the regulatory side, in terms of how digital lending can happen. Recently, Abe came out with the you know, guidelines around uh, digital lending. Uh, it's all aimed at making that business a uh, you know, lot more stronger, efficient, and, you know, uh, and fit for scale. As well as there's another you know, aspect that is building out, which is around how do we move to a digital bank sort of ecosystem, right? Uh, again, regulatorily, uh, about three months ago, RBA came out with this digital bank uh, unit guidelines, which allows banks to actually have a parallel sort of core, if you will, and have a completely you know, cloud-based you know, uh, technology strategy. Right? So we're working with a number of banks on that and figuring out how we can you know, uh, uh, take it up and you know, run for their own sort of units. Uh, so I just want to spend the next three, four minutes talking about these two areas. So what we are doing on the digital core uh, is basically saying what would that digital bank look like? Uh, it obviously needs to go away from uh, the inefficiency of a legacy systems, right? Where today a bank would, if there are 20 different products, uh, potentially there are 20 different technology stacks that are at play, and everybody in the bank's technology office is trying to, you know, bring it all together and make it work. And when new products like, you know, we saw that with UPI. When they start scaling, you know the underlying system starts creaking, and you have a very bad customer experience, right? So, uh, I'd, so therefore, digital bank by design will have to have customer at the center, and offer all of the products that a bank could potentially offer uh, as potentially microservices, right? So, your customer comes in, he has got 50 different products to choose from, and it's an a la carte where you know those product can get launched almost in no time as bunch of configuration, and you know how it can be, uh, you know, sort of taken out. What that also provides uh, is an ability for the bank to start thinking about how do I leverage new forms of distribution, right? So if a bank is able to offer a digital bank, uh, can that same be SDK'd and put out in a third party you know, uh, origination ecosystem, uh, which is where the power of the platform actually sort of comes in, where everything that is available on a digital bank app of a bank can actually get wrapped into a new you know, skin and be embedded into a third-party ecosystem. And it will work within the guardrails that the regulator has provided with respect to how data can be accessed, how you know, information can be exchanged, and what experience uh, you know, can get delivered. Right? And a lot of that also you know, is aimed at today, we are in an environment where there's a lot of changes regulatorily also that's happening, where uh, every week or every fortnight, uh, you have a new set of regulation that are coming in. And how do you keep pace with that you know, changing compliance and regulatory requirement, given the fact that this is also going to go into more and more increasingly you know, a, a third party channel from a distribution standpoint. So the, the, uh, our product kind of takes care of that. 
and ultimately all of this should lead to you know uh, lower cost so is the bank spending far lower than what they would otherwise spend uh, is where the decision making will also sort of come from uh, we have had uh, you know of the top five banks three banks implementing the digital bank you know in some uh, you know after the other where we have been able to demonstrate almost about 40 percent of cost save vis-a-vis -vis what their sort of legacy systems are you know running on right so therefore uh, it it kind of makes it uh, imperative for the bank to look at it as an opportunity uh, so therefore the you know key tenets from our standpoint uh, is essentially it has to be cloud native by design uh, it should sort of lend itself to low code no code so anybody can use it you know and kind of offer it uh, we are all you know uh, real time natives as we call it india as a market uh, but in other markets where we go uh, real time in itself is a big boon so you know so everything that we do around data analytics will all have to feed into from a, on a real time basis uh, so a bunch of these things kind of become the key tenet from a you know a digital core you know product proposition standpoint um, that's as far as the digital bank is concerned. From a, what we are doing on the digital lending side is even more uh, interesting, right? Which is, uh, you know, for a NBFC today, the challenges are, and there are different scale, size, and types of NBFCs. Uh, how do you actually create a bouquet of products? Uh, how do you get into new products? Like, you know, if you, you know, if you're eligible, uh, you could apply and launch a credit card as an NBFC today, right? Uh, recently, RBI allowed that. Uh, so, if you have to launch a credit card. What's the business angle to it? What is the risk management angle to it? Uh, what is the technology angle to it are things that we need to solve for. So th those are the aspects that our platform is today taking care of. And then new and emerging products like you know BNPL, if an NBFC wants to launch a, its own version of a BNPL, or it already has a consumer durable loan, uh, it wants to solve for discovery and distribution where at a storefront, a customer wants to avail you know uh, financing for a white goods they are buying. So some of these elements is where our you know neo's credit suit you know is is actually sort of playing really well uh, most of the top tier you know nbfcs we are actually actively engaged in sort of building out some of these new capabilities that are adjacent to their system but you know the opportunity to do some of this is resting entirely on how how well the you know uh, lms platform can scale so therefore there's a lot of work that we are doing with respect to uh, how flexible can that LMS become? LMS and the LOS com in, in a combination, and also layer that in with new, you know, events that are happening in the market. Uh, how do you make it more fungible for the account aggregator ecosystem to actually sort of get plugged in? Uh, how do you make sure that you know KYC from a digital lending standpoint meets the requirement for uh, you know uh, some of the you know opportunities that are out there? Uh, this morning, one of the gentlemen who presented spoke about having to wait for 30 minutes before a fund transfer happened. Can we use regulatory tech, the KYC products, to make fund transfer you know, real time? We can do a, a identity check on the fly when a, you know, uh, when a fund transfer request is taken for a new you know, beneficiary and complete the transaction in real time. Right? So those are already at play in terms of uh, you know, how do you enable you know, that use case to be more relevant from a customer standpoint. And, and overall, you know, we believe that you know, there is a very, very thin line uh, between a consumer durable loan a personal loan and what a credit card today offers, where there is a convenience of payment along with the line. Uh, and increasingly, we will see that line starting to blur, right? So you are on Flipkart or Amazon, you are looking for a phone. By the time you you know decide on the color of the phone, uh, today the technology is equipped to actually go, you know, fetch your credit profile, you know, underwrite you and present an offer saying this phone you can buy for on a three year my with a new lender, right? So and, and that magic is possible because of a number of factors that have played out at a macro level. Uh, we are just bringing all of that into the into into a capability that can make the customer experience a lot more presentable and you know and usable, right? Uh, so therefore, we believe that there's a lot of uh, headroom for uh, innovation and you know uh, new uh, forms of products that can come out from the uh, NBFC side, not just on the consumption credit uh, and and that story, uh, but the things that we are doing around fleet as a capability so can we uh, can we actually create a working capital product based on fast track data and and the fuel payments that are going out uh, can we actually you know securitize uh, you know shares and provide a line of credit for somebody who is invested in, in in securities so there's a lot that's going on from a digital lending standpoint uh, which are very powerful for a bank as well as an nbfc uh, and we believe that uh, you know we would be uh, you know right place to actually have these conversations uh, if not anything else we could actually do a you know product 
uh, deep dive and a co-creation sort of session, uh, which will give a lot more flavor in terms of uh, what we are seeing across the board. And for us, the tech is just a means to an end, uh, uh, like the way you know businesses should look at. And and we believe that you know, with some of you, we would we'd be able to have that conversation along with our colleagues uh, from our team. Uh, I'm actually well ahead of my time. Maybe I'll bring up the second video that we had. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we have uh, a whole host of them, uh, both from a fintech standpoint as well as uh, banks and NBFCs. Are you asking any, any NBFCs that are alive? So T TVS Credit, for example, uh, runs a BNPL product. Uh, there are uh, at least the, of the top 10 NBFCs, four or five of them where we are you know, launching a BNPL product. We can sort of take, have that conversation offline in terms of what product and how we are building it out. Sure. Okay. I'll so much. Thank you, Mr. Madhusudanan, for that wonderful presentation. I would request Mr. Baiju Joseph, CTO of Future General I India Insurance, to please present a memento as a token of our appreciation. To Mr. Madhusudanan, our co-founder, M2P Fintech. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together.